I think we should be maybe a little bit concerned about uh, actually becoming too much of a single world government. Um, if, if I may say that we want to avoid creating a civilizational risk by having, um, frankly, this may sound a little odd, too much cooperation between governments. You know, if you know, if you look at say the at history and the rise and fall of civilizations, um, the, the really all throughout history, civilizations have risen and fallen. But it hasn't meant the doom of humanity as a whole because there've been there've been all these separate civilizations that were separated by great distances. And so, you know, say like while Rome was falling, it, uh, it you know. Uh, Islam was rising, and uh, so you had like a, uh, you know, the, the sort of caliphate do, doing incredibly well while Rome was doing terribly. Um, and that actually ended up being a source of preservation of knowledge uh, and, and, uh, and many uh, scientific advancements. And so, um, so I think we want to be a little bit cautious about uh, being too much of a world, of a single uh, civilization, because if we are too much of a single civilization, then if, if, we, if the whole the whole thing may collapse. Now, I'm not, obviously not suggesting war or anything like that, but I think we want to be a little bit wary of actually cooperating too much. It sounds a little odd, but um, but we, we just we, we want to have some amount of civilizational diversity such that if uh, if something does go wrong with some part of civilization, that the whole thing doesn't collapse uh, and 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 you know humanity keeps moving forward. The global economy, let alone the environment, is simply too complex to model. It is for this reason, fundamentally, that we have and require a free market system. The free market is the best model of the environment we can generate. Not only is the free market the best model of the environment we can generate, it is and will remain the best model that can, in principle, ever be generated with its widely distributed computations, constituting the totality of the choices of seven billion people. It simply cannot be improved upon, certainly not by presumptuous power-mad globalist utopians who think that hiring someone, mysteriously manipulating a few carefully chosen numbers and then reading the summarized output means genuine contact with the reality of the future and the generation of knowledge unassailable on both the ethical and the practical front. We're not evil just because we don't believe that you are omniscient. We're not evil just because we don't want you to assume omnipotence and omnipresence too. There is simply no pathway forward to the green and equitable utopia that necessitates the further impoverishment of the already poor, the compulsion of the working class, or the sacrifice of economic security and opportunity on the food, energy, and housing front. There is simply no pathway forward to the global utopia you hypothetically value that is dependent on force and even if there was, what gives you the right to enforce your demands on other sovereign citizens equal in value to you? An alternative solution. A better way forward would be to prioritize the problems that beset all of us on this still green, functional and increasingly abundant planet with the requisite focus and attention demanded of a true political class elected by the people, capable of and willing to look at everything, trying to fix where necessary, trying to maintain as much freedom and autonomy as possible, and stop simply capitalizing narcissistically on the mere appearance of action, knowledge, and virtue. We should obtain true cooperative consent from those affected, farmers, truckers, working class people, who have turned in irritated desperation to figures such as Trump, and work with them rather than forbidding them with your power or improving them so they will be finally worthy of your time and attention. Help replace dirty energy with clean if you must, but do it on your own dime. 
and make sure that the results are cheap and plentiful if you want to help the poor and the planet. The warning bells are ringing. Listen to them before they turn into sirens. We will not advance without resistance through the straits of your enforced privation. We will not allow you to steal and destroy the energy that makes our lives bearable and that produces our food and shelter and housing and the sporadic delights of modern life just to address your existential terror, particularly when it will fail to do so in any case. We will not allow our children to be criticized first for having the temerity to merely exist and then deprived of the prosperous and opportunity rich future we strived so hard to prepare for them. We remain unconvinced that your frightened and self congratulatory moralizing and intellectual pretension, ignorance of the limits of statistics and misuse of arithmetic. We do not believe, finally, and most absolutely, that your declared emergency and the panic you sow because of it means that you should now be ceded all necessary authority. So, leave us alone, you centralizers of power.